Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Atlanta Business Radio, spotlighting the city's best businesses and the people who lead them. Lee Cantor here with Stone Payton, another episode of Atlanta Business Radio. And Stone, we had a busy weekend. We were over at uh, Cobb Galleria uh, doing the Grow ATL event, a lot of entrepreneurs over there. How fun is that, man? I feel like I'm 10 years younger when we come out of one of those things. I am tired at the end of the day, but to hear the stories of these bright, passionate entrepreneurs, I mean, they're gladiators, man. They're putting it all on the line. They're out there doing some marvelous work. And uh, shout out to J.R. McNair and Velocity we're going to be collaborating with them to launch that entire channel to serve that constituency, both with their small business day and their uh, grow conferences all over the country. Uh, so this is going to be a fun partnership and we're going to get a chance to continue to capture conversations with even more entrepreneurs. So hey, it beats the heck out of working, man. I love it. Absolutely. But that was fun, but that was the past. That's right. Nothing compared. Absolutely pales in comparison to what we're going to get a chance to do this morning. This is going to be a fantastic segment. Please join me in welcoming to the broadcast President with Solomon Brothers, Mr. Jaron Solomon. Good morning, sir. Good morning, gentlemen. Well, Jaron, before we get too far into things, can you tell us a little bit about Solomon Brothers? How are you serving, folks? Yeah, so we've been a local jeweler jewelry store here in Atlanta uh, since 1982. Uh, my dad started the company with my mother um, back in the day, just a little 600 square feet of showroom in Tower Place in Buckhead. And, was there a uh, brother? There was so a- my two uncles, um, it wouldn't make sense, the name right? If- <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> names of things that, that maybe aren't accurate. That's- no, my uh, my two uncles came over to the States uh, from South Africa, which is where mm-hmm. my family's from, and uh, they came over in the early 90s. So it was always kind of a, a family affair? Yeah, always. And then now it's kind of, there was a succession, now the transition to his, your father's children are now the brothers? <laughs> Yeah, so it's uh, yeah, a little bit of a mix right now. Mm-hmm. So my dad was the oldest of three boys, mm-hmm. and um, my dad uh, passed away a few years ago, and my his middle brother um, retired once uh, everything kind of played out that way, and uh, now it is my uncle Anthony, mm-hmm. um, my wife Allie, and my mother works at the company mm-hmm. still, and myself. Now, what was it like growing up in a family business? You know, it was very um, intimate, uh, truly. We got to see a lot of cool stories. Uh, The jewelry business breeds a lot of happiness. Mm -hmm. Uh, You get to meet a lot of really cool people um, doing radio things. We've Mm -hmm. been on the radio in Atlanta for a long time. uh, So we've gotten to know a lot of the radio personalities, and they've become family of ours. Um, Neil Bort's somebody that's you know close to the family now, Mm -hmm. and um, we were sad to see him leave the radio business. Right. (laughs) But... um, you know, growing up in a family business, it was dinner time was all about business. And, you know, we, uh, we enjoyed learning and hearing different stories. And, you know, the business really evolved, uh, in tremendous ways. Um, you know, I was only born in 89. So, right. So um, did you, was it always, was your thinking always, I'm going to work here? Or did you have other areas where you were like, you know, I want to be a, a cowboy or I want to <laughs> be a doctor or whatever? So I always knew I wanted to be in sales. Uh Um, That was even at a young age. Even at a young age, uh, I wasn't much for uh, school. I I just wanted to go out there and talk to people and make friends, and um, you know. So you didn't see sales as kind of a negative. A lot of people see sales as, oh, I don't want to be that guy. Yeah, no, definitely. uh, Thanks for making me realize that now. (laughs) Do people not like me? (laughs) Um, No, I sales was always a a positive thing for me. It was always connecting with people. Um, Like helping and serving rather than I'm going to figure out a way to get their money. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have a, we're in a product-based business, um, Mm -hmm. you know, that's a tangible product. And so I'm not selling insurance and I'm not selling things that people can't see and feel and get benefit out of versus, you know, I get to show someone a really sparkly diamond, right? For right. lack of better words. And, you know, he gets to give it to her and she's really happy. And I get but to. But you are selling an emotion. You're it, it, absolutely, you know, it, it's an item that right. they can hold, but it's also a feeling that yeah. it, when they hand it over that they feel and then the recipient feels. Exactly. And so thankfully it's a really 
grand emotion, right? You know, it's especially positive. with what I'm doing. So, so now, um, how did your kind of sales philosophy evolve? Was it from your your dad and his brothers? Like they had a culture and a way of doing business that really kind of worked and has been passed on. Yeah, absolutely. My dad, um, the most honest man you know I've ever gotten to know in my life. I mean, almost to a fault. Uh, he was so transparent in everything that he did. And I really have learned from that, uh, truly in a cliche type of way. He just always saw the long game, never cut corners, you know, never took advantage of anybody. And in our business, in the diamond business, it's a very, um, I got to know pretty quick coming into it that there's a lot that people don't know. Mm -hmm. And when they find someone that they trust, you know, they'll never leave you. It's a customer for life if you, if you serve them properly and, and honestly and authentically. Exactly. And my dad just showed me that, uh, better than anyone I could have ever hoped to have learned from. And, um, I'm just taking that same approach all the way through, uh, all of the talking and the selling and, you know, all of that comes to an end at some point and you got to serve a quality product and give quality service and, and make sure you get that trust in people. So now how has this kind of digital uh, landscape changed the diamond business or has it? Yeah, it's changed it uh, and it's changed it all for the better. Um, so I'm in the bridal diamond business. Uh, so that's the sweet spot or your niche that you serve? Right. And, and so that's the, the fiance typically yes. is buying a diamond to, uh, to propose, propose with to and, the, and in that process, there wasn't a lot of research for people to do out there. And now with the digital world, um, we're all about putting education out there, understanding, you know, where a diamond comes from, you know, what is a good diamond? What is a bad diamond? What is a good value? What is a bad value? And those two things are separate. And now with the internet, you know, world that we live in and the social media world that we live in, there's so much information out there. And I think that that's all positive things for a guy to be able to go and read and do his research. And then he comes to see me and heck, he might know more than half my salespeople do <laughs> right. you know, when he walks through the door, but that that's a good thing. Mm hmm. Now, what about the um, a lot of the young people nowadays are less about stuff and more about experiences? Does that come into play in your business as well? It does. Um, you know, it's the experience in the showroom mm -hmm. for us, um, and we understand that people want to. They don't just want to go through the motions. They don't just want to pull out their credit card and buy the diamond and say, "Oh, I've got to go give it to her." You know, they want to feel and understand, you know, where did the diamond come from? So something that we do is that we source the rough diamond actually, and we cut and polish the stone and then we bring it over to the States and then we're selling it. So we really have a good, um, you know, mind to market strategy. And it's really cool for the consumer to be able to know where did my diamond come from? Is it from South Africa? Is it from Russia? Is it from Canada? Is it from Australia? And, these are the kind of things that you can't get a feel online um, and you really can't get a feel at other retailers, you know, around the country. It's something very unique that we do. Um, so we're just trying to bring that transparency and that experience when they're going through it that, you know, they know the entire lineage of this diamond. So now the you're targeting these people that are, I guess, young 20s, 30s. Is that your typical client? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the age it's funny the age is actually getting older of people getting um, married married and, and uh -huh. engaged um i think that they want to do more travel right before they turn 30 right. and you know and you know it's gotten much safer to have children at a later right. age right and um so i think we're seeing that trend happen um so again we're seeing a, a very educated client coming in when the time is right for them and uh we're really enjoying that now as the uh, walk me through the process they've gone they, they know they're going to get engaged. So that person in their mind is now Googling, I got to buy a diamond yeah. or some sort of, you have to have some sort of online presence around the keywords that are important to them. Exactly. And then they go to your website and is there a lot of information and there has to be a lot of content about your story that you just explained? 
Yeah, so wonderful Google has figured out mm-hmm. that uh, where do I buy my engagement ring should be a $12 click. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's uh, so we try and find the right keywords um, right. to make it as economical as, as possible for us and uh, drive them to the website <laughs> and really get them, uh, once they're on the site, have tools for them. So understanding the four C's of a diamond and, you know, where a diamond comes from. And then as far as just searching for a diamond on price, you know, what does a one carat cost? What does a two carat cost? What does a D color cost? What, you know, right. There's a lot of variables, a lot of variables, mix and match to get pretty much, I would guess any price range and any quality that you want. Right. And so that on the website, they can actually search by a little sliding bar, you know, and they can just go back and forth, you know, what is this color? What is this clarity? And you can do all kinds of mix and matches and figure out, you know, what price point and which color and clarity is going to match best for you. Um, and there's more variables. Every diamond is unique in right. itself. And so they'll get a really good sense of where they need to be budget wise. And then that's when they come in the store and they can really get a lot more information on the stone itself. Um, now do they have an idea of the shape? Because even the shape has a bunch of variables. So hopefully for the gentlemen out there listening, um, they can get some ideas from, their girlfriend or the sister or the mother. Uh, right. We get a lot of, you know, Pinterest has been <laughs> that, wonderful. That's good. Pinterest has been wonderful for our business. Um, it gives most, it's been wonderful for all guys out there. Um, you know, they have an idea of. So they can just go to Pinterest and put engagement rings or yeah. popular, or trendy or, you know, what celebrity is. Yeah. Or look up her board. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, she's got her own Pinterest board and she, don't look too far. She's told you exactly what <laughs> right. she wants. So don't stray from so it. So they can bring that to you? Just show me a picture and we make it happen. Wow. So now what about, um, do you customize the band and things like that to make it a unique thing that do, does match the tastes and the budget? Yeah. So great question. And we do a lot of computer drawings um so these cad drawings that we'll do oh so it's not like here pick between these four bands not if you don't want it to be uh-huh. so i've got a lot of inventory um of course to choose from so anything that is what i would call maybe bread and butter type of stuff just simple classic clean right. doesn't make it bad just makes it classic right um but if you want a little twist to it and you want something different you know you want to put some sapphires in there along with the diamonds or you right. want to do something sentimental you know, we can completely customize it as to what the customer wants and there's no extra charges anymore or anything like that. Those days are in the past. You know, it's so easy to do on the computer now. We can whip out a model in 15 minutes and it's no issue. And then uh, for you right now, how are you evolving your business now that you're the president? You know, the word experience does get thrown around a lot. I try... And say the word and then back it up with, you know, certain things that we're trying to do. So I will say that we're trying to get the experience better um, for everyone. A lot of people focus on the millennials and things like that. You know, someone at the age of 20 and someone at the age of 50, they all want a good experience. Right. You know, and I, so I don't buy into necessarily the age demographic as much as just the overall feel of what's happening in the store. So I just launched a second location up in Alpharetta, Georgia. And that's a big departure, right? Hadn't you previously been in one location for a long time? Yeah. So we're still, of course, in Buckhead. Right. Um, and we, we were there for over 35 years. So now we're kind of going outside the perimeter, if right. you will. Um, Be brave. <laughs> that's right. And, uh, I'm in, I'm an inside kind of kid. So it, uh, it was a lot for me to go out there, but it seems pretty far. There's a lot of cars here. <laughs> and, um, you know, so there, as we're going to remodel Buckhead, but we had the opportunity to see what it would look like in Alpharetta. So we have a full stocked bar, uh, with wine behind the bar and our own private label, uh, where we can have people come in and on certain occasions, you know, be it a big anniversary gift or whatnot. We can give them a bottle of wine that has a Solomon Brothers signature mm-hmm. on it and kind of date the bottle that commemorates that time and do something more than just give them the piece, give it to your wife, and right. hopefully we'll see you in five years. You know, have something in front of them that says thank you and can commemorate the evening or the occasion. And these are the t- type of things I'm trying to bring to the table. Um, giveaways, you know, are all great, but I try and be on trend with, okay, what do people want? You know, so if you're buying, you know, Yeti coolers went through a great stage. Right. So 
uh, I went through a stage of giving away Yeti coolers throughout the summer. Diamond encrusted Yeti coolers. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> and because the, the Yeti wasn't expensive enough. We took it up a notch. <laughs> <laughs> it carries 500 beers and it right. never gets cold, but let's do <laughs> No, it, um, you know, so I try and find what people want and mm-hmm. they like and make the experience for them not just about jewelry. Right. You know, now when you have a customer, is it typical that, um, they come in initially to buy the diamond, but then there's a kind of customer for life mentality where you're trying to serve them throughout the relationships kind of lifespan and and beyond that, you know, maybe when their kids have kids, then they're getting engaged and you want to keep them around. Yeah. So two parts to that question, because the second part is actually I want to mm-hmm. touch on. It's really cool. But um, the first part, we are all in this for the long haul. Um, the reason that I'm a price leader you know, in my category is to get people in the door and to get them that initial engagement ring. It's not to make a bunch of money. It's to get them in the channel and to make a customer for life. So we will always hopefully market those people in a non annoying way (laughs) and, um, you know, get them back in and get their fiance and then eventually wife, you know, into the showroom to make like a wish list and come in and pick out product from a hundred dollars retail to, $500,000 $500,000 retail and, you know, just anywhere in between and, right. you know, have them for a one year anniversary, five year anniversary, 50 year anniversary, hopefully. And the second part is having their kids come in. You know, that's what I've gotten to experience a lot of, you know, obviously at my right. age. And my dad built such an amazing clientele here in Atlanta that I am servicing just a ton of the kids now that are my age. Uh, they because come in with the their parents, parents saying, this is where I went. And yep. they treated me well and here and yeah. And it's amazing to hear them say, you know, there's nowhere else to go. Right. This and is that, the place, the go-to place. Yeah. So now do you, um, you mentioned that age, you try not to focus so much as the age of the person, but give them experience no matter what age they are. Is there kind of a demographic regarding, are they, do they typically, are they business owners? Are they just Anybody that just works somewhere or is there, or do you notice any kind of um, clusters of types of people that come in? Are they celebrities? Are they uh, athletes? So very interesting for our business because Solomon Brothers Jewelers is kind of known for a high-end feel and things of that nature. And it's not that we're not. However, because we are a price leader in the diamond business, my prices are better than anyone in the city just because I choose to be. I always tell people it's not a magic sauce. I just choose to make less margin. That's right. all. <laughs> and because of that, I get in the person working the nine to five, works very hard, works hard for their money, looks out for their money. So they come to me because they know they're getting the best value for their dollar. Right. Whether that's a $1,500 engagement ring, which I have in the showroom, Or it's a $150,000 engagement ring, which might be your celebrity. Um, So, yeah, we service a lot of the Braves players and Falcons players. um, But we that's not who we're going after. If they choose to come shop with us, of course, we welcome it. You have something for them. Absolutely. But you don't target people by kind of the class. You you want to lead with being the, what do you call it, the price leader and then let the relationship blossom from that point. Exactly. And so because of that, you're going for as wide of an audience as possible. Absolutely. Yeah, we've got something for everyone. We truly believe that. I know it's kind of an unpopular way to mm-hmm. sometimes do business because you're kind of like, well, you're trying to be everything to everyone. Are you going to be you know, nothing to nobody, right? right. And so in the diamond business, though, it's not quite like that because there is a budget, there is a price, and there is a diamond for that budget and price. Mm-hmm. And we can fit all of those niches. So now, uh, is the Alpharetta store up and running, or where are you at right now? It is. We launched on Friday, actually, and uh, had our first full weekend out there and got really great support, uh, and we really thank everyone in Alpharetta, and the Alpharetta uh, City Council out there was very good to us and really helped us along the way, and uh, it's been uh, it's got a cool vibe out there. I like it. So now, um, where's where's it located? So it's off Old Milton Parkway, off Exit 10, uh, right next to the Avalon uh, in a little strip center. So it's near the Avalon complex? It is. It is right next door, and uh, we're excited to have 
open parking, you know, in Buckhead, we've right. dealt with uh, underground parking for a little while, and uh, it's nice, and people know it, but uh, it's nice to have an open parking lot out there. You can see the store from the road, and it, uh, it makes it a lot easier. So if somebody wanted to learn more um, about Solomon Brothers' website and the location also of the Buckhead? Absolutely, yeah. Go to SolomonBrothers.com. Uh, come visit us, 17th floor of Tower Place in Buckhead or off Old Milton Parkway in Alpharetta. Good stuff. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. All right. This is Lee Cantor for Stone Payton. We will see you all next time on Atlanta Business Radio.